Hello fellow sewists and sewing enthusiasts. Welcome to round four of my Spot the Difference game, which has nothing to do with the subject of this video. The subject being, of course, more Edwardian shenanigans. This time in the form of a bolero jacket I made using an actual period pattern. I made this jacket to match my Edwardian maternity skirt, and although I did not have a chance to wear it while pregnant, because it wasn't done yet, it would have worked just fine for pregnancy, since it is a very loose fit and is not meant to close in the front. Luckily, the maternity skirt still works postpartum. All it needed was the addition of a second drawstring to bring in the excess fullness at the natural waist, now that I have one again. These are some of the strangest pattern pieces I have ever seen. And it was quite a puzzle figuring out how they all fit together. So this gets placed on the fold. This is the center back. This is the back. And then this is the sleeve, which connects to the top sleeve seam. Then this is the sleeve. And this is the front. And then this piece attaches here, and this piece attaches here, but then this edge goes over here, and this one attaches here. And then this attaches to itself at the top edge. And same with this one. It's, it's a very, very weird three-dimensional puzzle. Okay, first official try-on. The jacket is basted together because I wanted to put the pieces together try it on and see what it looks like so I can make sense of the placement of all the pieces and figure out where I want to put trim and how I want to trim it. I want to match coordinate with the skirt obviously. That's my uh, little peanut there if you hear baby noises. These pleats are just pinned the sleeve is gathered slash pleated into the cuff. I liked the effect of gathering the under sleeve and the back, which has a curve, into the cuff, but then pleating the front top portion because that's what it looks like is happening on the pattern envelope to me, anyway. I really like these pleats at the waist. I think that's how I'm going to do that and then gather the back, side and back. Yes, it's all right, little one. It's okay. Uh, baby's first cameo. But I do like the overall shape. I think it's pretty cute. I've only pinned up the one side and haven't bothered to put the cuff on the other sleeve because this is essentially a mock-up, although I'm going to take it all apart and put it back together using a shorter stitch length. <laughs> um, the other reason I chose to base it all and try it on first is because I'm not sure if I want to line it or not or if I want to flatline the pieces to give them some extra body. I wanted to see particularly how the sleeve holds up on its own without extra stability added. So, playing around with that. I think it might be okay, just like this. Yeah, Peanut has his own opinion. 
We'll see. Now obviously, because I was making this jacket as the second part of a matching suit, I needed to add a similar pattern of chevrons as the skirt, using the same dark brown Petersham ribbon. Fortunately, I had plenty left. So here are the trim options I'm looking at, and I have it on my male dress form because he's got nice shoulders that allow me to pin um, against. So, starting with the neck edge, I want to have this line of ribbon about an inch away from the edge. This is going to be faced with some bias. And then this, I think, will just cover the stitching line of the bias on the inside. Ignore that. That's just the ribbon looped around from the other side because I'm only doing one side for testing purposes. So then the ribbon from the neck edge comes around and meets at a point in the back to mirror the point in the front of the skirt. And then I added a second one over the shoulder and will end here. Obviously that will just be cut away. And then I needed more down on the sleeve, so I added, this would be tucked into the seam of the sleeve here. Come down and make a point over the sleeve seam. And the same thing on this side. Tuck into the seam. And originally I had tried this wider brown ribbon, which the waist from this front side seam around to the other side will be gathered and the directions say to stitch a tape on the inside, but I thought because I have this beautiful brown Petersham ribbon that coordinates with the narrow brown Petersham that I'm using for trim, I thought it would be kind of cool to stitch the ribbon on the outside for the stay tape. A neat contrast, but I wasn't sure if I liked how it looked with just two points on the back. I would really like three. So I took off the wide ribbon and added a third, which I would tuck into the seam here and here. Um. But I'm not sure. I might go back to the wide ribbon at the back. If I did do that, I would tuck the end of the ribbon under this pleat here. I do want the three pleats in the front. I really like how this looks when I'm wearing it. I like the, the pleats fanning up from the waist. And I thought it would be kind of a cool detail to just have the brown end here and be covered by this pleat. So I'm still playing with that. I might still go that direction. I think I do want three rows of trim on the cuffs. I'm just not sure if this is enough trim on the front and on the sleeves. So that's where I'm at right now. Just playing. Okay. This is another trim option. I wasn't sure I liked how the third point here was going to look once the waist got gathered up. I thought that it would probably distort the lines of the trim, so I've put the wide ribbon back on to see how I like it. I think I'm okay with having just two points. I might make the top one not quite as deep. I don't know, but it kind of mimics the collar effect, and I'm not mad about it. I may add a third point on the sleeves. Still deciding. I might start one higher, start at the point 
up here and go down there and then start closer to here and go down towards the cuff. We'll see. Okay, now I've added a third line of trim to the sleeves. Let's see what it looks like on this side. I think I like that better. I wish I could make this a sharper point to have it look like it's supposed to be another chevron, but it doesn't really work that way with the line I'm trying to get in the back. I'm not sure I love how this line is getting distorted by the pleats, but I want to keep the pleats. Maybe it'll look better when it's sewn rather than just pinned in place. Okay, one last change. I decided to continue the line from the point of the sleeve here down to the front. I think it makes this transition look less awkward. So now these will both end at this neckline edge. And I think that makes, it balances it better. I think I like it. With the final trim design pinned in place, I tried the jacket on my dress form with the skirt to check for visual balance of the overall ensemble. I was happy with how it looked, so I removed all the pins and took the jacket apart. Then I sewed it back together, but just along the top sleeve seams to make placement of trim easier. Once all the trim was in place, I finished construction and tried it on again. Very happy with the results. I seriously love this jacket so much. It is officially my favorite thing that I've ever made out of an old sheet. And I've made a lot of things out of old sheets. It is so fun to wear and I feel very elegant and also comfortable. I need to find more reasons to wear it. If you are playing Spot the Difference, leave me a comment below with your guesses. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. And if you'd like to see more, definitely subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Bye.